the guide is widely regarded as one of the most difficult and challenging tasks in all of Escape from Tarkov. I can agree with this, but lucky for you guys, I've completed this task for the last 6 wipes, so I know a thing or two about getting this done quickly and efficiently. Now this guy was helpful, consider hitting that sub button. 90% of viewers who watch my guides aren't subbed, so if you found it helpful, hit the button, helps me out. Regardless guys, let's jump right in. The guide can be a frustrating task for a lot of players, including myself the first time I attempted it. Today we're going to break down exactly how I make this quest easy for myself by discussing quest requirements, what is a survive, what is a run through, how do you fail, map orders, loadouts, overall tips, and tips for each map. The guide is a peacekeeper task that requires you to get level 40 and is unlocked after you complete Watch Out Part 6, which is a different quest that requires you to get level 7 sniper rifle skill. Now the guide, at the time of making this video, requires you to extract the following maps with a survive status in a row without dying. Woods, Customs, Interchange, Shoreline, Factory, Labs, and Reserve. Now currently Lighthouse is not required for the guide, but in the future that could change and any new maps they add to the game could also be added to this quest. Completion of this quest awards 42,000 XP, 29,000 USD, and then you can unlock the slot plate from level 4 Peacekeeper to put on any helmet that you'd like. To actually gain credit for completing each map for the guide, you have to extract with the survive status. Now you earn the survive status upon successful extraction from the raid with at least one of the two following requirements. At least 7 minutes have passed since the start of the raid, or you have earned at least 200 XP throughout the raid. And this XP can be earned by killing AI or players around 100 XP per kill. Through headshot bonus around 100 XP per headshot kill, you can gain XP from healing, looting, pressing F on dead corpses, and there's a few other ways as well that we'll get into later. Headshotting any AI or player will result in enough XP for a survive because you gain 100 for the kill and another 100 XP for the headshot bonus. Now, if you are unsure if you got a headshot, what you can do is get some looting XP by going ahead and pressing F on the body. And the second you do that, in the bottom right of your screen, you will see an XP gain for discovering new items. So once you press F, you will gain, let's say, 80 XP. It can be 100, it can be 80, it could be 50. Once you see that number, keep track of it. And then what you can do is pick up items off the scav to gain even more XP. So let's say you gain 80, you can pick up the shotgun and you can pick up a helmet and a face mask and then keep track of those items that also give you XP. So you can get 20 additional XP of picking up the items from the body. So you get 100 for the kill and then 80 for pressing F and then 20 more for looting actual items which gets you to your 200 eventually. And sometimes you can press F on the body and get 300 XP instantly. So it's just kind of RNG but keep track of that. And you wanna make sure that you're not getting a run through which is when you leave the raid too early because if you get a run through, you will not get credit towards completing that map for the guide. Some of you might be wondering, what is a run through? A run through is a status you receive upon extracting a raid too early. So you leave the raid before you're in 200 XP or before you've been a raid for at least seven minutes. When you get a run through, a few things happen. First off is any items that you find in raid will lose their founding raid status. And when you get a run through, you do not get credit towards completing a map for the guide. So you waste your time, you have to go back in complete the map all over again so you can get that one done. So the guide is actually a quest that you can fail, but it's really no problem if you fail the quest because there's no penalty for failing it. And if you do fail, you can just restart the quest and start over again. When you do fail the guide, the quest starts over with no progress gained whatsoever because again, you have to survive all the maps in a row without dying. So when you die, the quest fails and you have to restart from scratch with no maps being survived. When you get a run through for the quest, it does not actually fail the guide, but you just don't gain credit, like I said earlier. So don't waste your time getting a run through. It's not going to end your, uh, it's not going to end your raid. So if you need to get out of there, it's okay. But just make sure you're not wasting your time because just the more times you have to go on a raid, the less chance of actually getting the quest done, right? And remember to restart your quest after you fail. You have to go back to the trader and hit the restart button every single time you die because I have awkwardly enough gone through three or four maps in a row after a tilting death, and then realized I never hit the restart button. So make sure that after you die, you double check you hit that button, and then make sure that you're checking after every raid because it is so frustrating when you die and then go back in and you're on a great streak for the guide. So just make sure you're not making the same mistake that I used to. Map order is extremely important for making the guide easy. I try to knock out the harder maps first, the ones that are easier to die on, and then I finish up with maps that are kind of big and open where I can avoid players and stay on the outskirts. So the order that works best for me, and that I always do the guide in, it starts off with Customs, then it goes to Factory, then Labs, then Reserve, then Interchange, 
then Woods, and lastly, Shoreline. Now, I find that ideal to knock Labs out of the way as early as possible because you don't want to risk dying to a hacker when you are six or seven raids into the guide. That feels awful to lose the guide to a hacker, whereas if you do the quest, do the map earlier, you can knock out that annoying map before uh, you even have to deal with that. And if you do get cheated, it's not a big deal. You're only three raids in. Now, you could start with Labs, but I like to go Factory and Customs first because I think those maps are very balanced in terms of extracts and spawns. So you have to always run through players to get out. So I'd rather get through Factory and Customs, which takes me about five minutes for Customs and like two for Factory. So I get out of those two raids in about seven minutes plus matching time. And then I'm good to go to Labs. I can get that quest done. And it just makes it easier for me because I get those quests, I get those maps done out of the way. And then after I do all of those three, I go to reserve. The reason I pick reserve fourth is I think that's the other like kind of balanced map where extracts are kind of rough. I'd recommend getting a Red Rebel to get through that map as fast as you possibly can because it's just a harder one to get through. Now, whenever I get through those four maps, no problem. I feel like I never have failed the guide when I got past reserve. I think Interchange, Woods, and Shoreline are very easy maps to just hug the outskirts and literally just avoid everything. So it makes it a lot easier because I don't really see players. I don't have to worry. Like, it's annoying to run into players and be in a gunfight when you only got three maps left or two maps left or even you're on your last map. So I like to finish with those because let's have to sing players. And the order is up to you, like I said. But I think this is what works best for me. You could start with your worst maps first, finish with your best maps last. However you want to do it is fine. But at least base it somewhat off this order. And I'd recommend getting labs done early on. So again, you don't die to cheaters because that is one of the most frustrating things when you're on your last map, you died to a cheater. Picking the right gear for these raids can really save your life. Now, starting off with helmets, I prefer wearing an Alton or a Riz T. You can get both of these in level 4 Ragman. And these cover your whole head, level 5 armor. Uh, super good. You'll bounce a lot of headshots. So you won't get one shot by scavs. Uh, really good. I prefer these. You can also wear any helmet that you want with headphones to get that hearing range. Um, the difference is you get better hearing, less protection, or more protection, less hearing. I'd rather go with the Alton. I think it's better. That's your call. Now, for armor choices, you could wear a Classics armor like like a Slick or like a Hex Grid, but these only cover Thorax. Um, back in the day, you used to not want stomach armor because black limbs used to eat a lot of damage, but recently they changed that, and it's going to stay this way probably forever now. So if you get shot in a black limb, you just take so much more damage now than you used to because they fixed like, some damage loss that used to occur with that. So if you don't have stomach armor... You can get, like, three shot in the stomach by match FMJ, or you can get four shot in the stomach by, like, M80 ammo, which is crazy. You can just die instantly. Any buckshot can, like, one-shot your stomach. So wearing things like Gazelle K are super, super good. But some level 4 Ragman or level 3 Ragman, uh, really, really, really good armor covers Thorax and stomach. Uh, you can also wear Karund armor if you want to. I think Gazelle is kind of honestly better for the stats and the weight and everything. You could also use a Killa armor off Killa or a Defender armor that you get off Sanitar's Bodyguards. Those are all great now with guns. Use what you're comfortable with. Any meta gun that you want to use is fine, or whatever you feel like you can kill people with. The meta gun change every wipe, so whatever you want to roll with. I prefer MDR as like my main gun for the guide personally, but 7 2 AKs are always good. Uh, M4s are usually pretty good wipe to wipe, not always, but sometimes they are. And then the foul can be good depending on the wipe. It's kind of just like a fun gun I like using, so whatever you feel like using, it's up to you. In my Discord, we have all my builds, no matter what wipe this is, all my builds will be up to date in my Discord. Link in description. Check that out if you want to. And then this MDR, I have a build for that I use this wipe currently. You can check that out. I'll leave that link at the top so you can go ahead and watch this gun in action if you want to use it. You know how to build it. Uh, starting off with meds, you can either use Grizzly or like a Saliwa, Hemostat, and Splint combo. I prefer Grizzly because it's the fastest healing in the game. Your call. For stims, I recommend having either a Propodol or a Morphine just bound in your rig. So you have painkillers on demand if you ever need to and things get rough. You can instantly painkiller. You're good to go. Now, I think Meldonin is one of the best sims in the game for doing any quest you have to survive because you take 10% reduced damage everywhere except for the head. So people hitting you in arms and legs and stomach and thorax, they deal less damage, which is really good because you live more if you take less damage, right? So I'd recommend using this every single raid just to get strength and endurance and then also popping an SJ6 stim every single raid so you can get across the map from point A to point B super fast. Now, I'd also keep an ETG-C in your container because these heal you to full super fast so if things get rough you can pop it from your container and they also out heal triple heavy blades so you can be just fucked up and just pop this thing and it'll save your life i hate playing the game without this stim it is so good 
you have to use these if you don't use them. We're going to painkillers. Any multi-use painkiller is fine. Be pre painkiller the whole time so you don't get caught in a black limb and die because of it. That would suck. And then bring food and water so you don't have to worry about, oh, I forgot to eat or drink. You got it on you always. So you're chilling. And that's what I use for lettuce. There's a lot of tips you can give to anyone doing the guide. And one of my best advice is try to get those first two raids out of the way as fast as possible and just play fast paced. There's nothing on the line yet because you haven't gotten through a big chunk of your maps yet. So what you want to do is get through those first two maps ASAP so then you can get onto labs and reserve and knock out the two actually hard maps. And then once those are done, you're home free. You're, you're good to get out of there. But you don't want to be spending 10 minutes for customs and 10 minutes for factory when there's nothing on the line. Like, who cares if you die when it takes barely any time to get through those maps anyway? So they're there for you to speed run through them, get out of there, and then spend most of your time on the last four maps because the longer you're on this quest and the longer you're on the streak is the more uh, gut-wrenching it really feels to be on this quest. So make sure that you're not getting in your own head by taking too long to get through these first couple of things. And then I would also recommend bringing friends. Now, this quest is a thousand times easier, both like in-game and mentally, when you have friends to watch your back and make you feel less nervous and talk to you. Now, ideally, I'd recommend, like I said earlier in the loadout section, that you'd wear a full helmet like an Alton, so you are protected against most ammos that people are using, especially with the ban on ammos like M61 on the market. So... You can do that while your friend wears a headset, and now your friend can tell you he hears someone running up if you don't hear them, and you're allowed to have that nice protection, and you are just chilling. You're protected while your friend can call out audio, and your friend can also be there to run into enemies if the five-man squad pulls up on you. He can run at them while you run away, and they're busy fighting him while you're getting out of there, and if he suicides so you can go ahead and get your quest done, then you owe him one. That's being a real friend, honestly. And something I want to say is don't bring too many people. The more protection you have, the more annoying your comms are. And is that you? Is that you? It just clogs comms. makes it very annoying. I'd recommend not going on more than a three-man, honestly. It keeps comms super clear. With a three-man, you can have one uh, for your friends right next to you all the time, like a little bodyguard. And then you can have one guy take point, and he can pretty much fish out any of the guys sitting in corners or bushes that ambush you guys. They'll kill him. Then you know where they are, and your other friend can go first, or you can go another way. And you can, if you want to, five-stack factory. You want to say factory for a later map, you can. Some people do five stack factory. There can only be one enemy on the map that you five stack it, so that's your call if you want to do it. And the last thing I'll say is you actually can cheese a survive status if you bring a teammate. So what you can let your teammate do is bring in a backpack and put his whole loadout inside of his backpack, and then he drops that on the ground, and you pick up the bag, you search the whole backpack, and you should get 200 XP. And then pretty much off your spawn, you get your 200 XP for your survive, so what they do is run across the map to extract, and you are totally fine. Just make sure, again, if you do this, I wouldn't do it on a factory. That is just, like, there's no room to do that. Just get your one kill and leave. And then if you are on a different map, make sure you're in, like, a building or in a safe area so you don't die while searching his backpack, and then you both die and the guide is over. I'd also recommend just don't be greedy. Too many players fail the guide by trying to loot hotspots or going near area to see if a GPU is there, or, you know, maybe there's a Bitcoin at this spawn. Like, screw it, man. Just get your quest done. There's so much time to swipe to get GPUs and Bitcoins. Get your quest out of the way. Focus only on survival and survival only. Something else I'll say is don't get tilted. This quest can be so frustrating, man, especially if you're having a rough start in the first couple maps. Just make sure that if you're frustrated, you take a break, you come back to this quest. This quest is big on mentality. It's really a mind game more than actually, like, tangible skill so make sure that you are on the right mindset to do this quest and you understand you're going to be doing this for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and a half and just get through it take your time and if you're in a bad mood and you're just tilted come back to it man the quest will still be here it's okay you'll have a much easier time doing this in the right headspace than you will doing it tilted i'm going to go through the routes that i use for each map when i do the guide so that you have the best idea going into the raid on what you should be doing and where you should be running go through these maps in order starting with customs then factory and so on and so on the way that i do it for the guide normally so on fact uh, i'm sorry on customs this is your first map uh there's no stress if you die you go again so if i spawn on this side of the map which is big red side i pretty much rush through construction and i try and kill scavs here and then i go towards new gas go through the factory shortcut leave through one of the bunkers and i'm done with that if i spawn by the factory shortcut i try and kill a scav over there one of the sniper scavs maybe and then i go through to hit the power switch and leave through fortress or i leave through RUAF. Really easy, straightforward, no stress. If you die, just restart the quest, go again. All right, so factory, by far the easiest map, in my opinion, especially early on, because you don't care if you live or die, right? It's so easy to get in and out. Later on, high stress, early on, no problem. What I recommend, bring a propodol or a morphine in your rig, just jam that thing off spawn to instantly be painkillered, 
and make sure that you bring the factory exit key so you can leave it one of like the 17 exits that require the key. Uh, what I do is pretty much off spawn, I'm going to rush the nearest player or scav. So if I was here, I would probably rush this way because when you spawn back this way, there's what's called forklift spawn, which is back here where there's dudes trapped right here, as well as there's glass hallway spawn, a dude at this box. So what I recommend doing is you go ahead and just kind of push this spawn. I come around this corner, honestly, I pull a nade out, and I need that, and then I just play aggressive into this spawn. And again, if you die, you're only one map in, so it's not a really big deal if you die. I come in here, I probably pre-fire this box, or, you know, I come in, I clear this angle, and then I pre-fire this box, usually. And you can just flick your mouse down if they're crouched. Uh, it's pretty easy. You kill this guy, uh, press F on his body, and then you just rotate down, and you can go down this staircase right here. Factory exit right there. That map's done. 30 seconds, you're out. And just pretty much anywhere you spawn, rush near an exit and try and listen for any scavs yelling or any shotguns going off or anything. All you need is one headshot or one kill and one pressing F on the body. So, like, you could spawn over here, maybe, and then run this way. And usually there's scavs, like, the way I'm running right now. You can say, oh, I see a scav, right? Headshot him, and now you just leave. That's it, you're done. So the map is super easy. Just rush near, close to the nearest spawn or rush to the nearest scav, press F on the body, and you're done. If you die, go buy customs, do it again, go factory, do it again. Real easy. All right, labs. Not that bad, as long as there's no cheaters, but you need to not take the wrong approach if you don't main labs. This is red room out this way, okay? This is like the big cat statue room. We're gonna go down to the basement this way. Whenever you spawn, I need you to go to the basement. This is only for the guide. Do not play labs like this normally, but this is just for the guide. What you're gonna do is run down here, and this is where main elevator is, this is where you hit the button to spawn raiders. Now, everyone's like, I wanna hit the button to spawn raiders so I can get my one kill and leave. Sure, that sounds good, right? But every single button you hit on labs, it lets the whole lobby know exactly where you are. They have their own announcement, and they're all unique. So when you hit a button, any allows you in the lobby, it's going to go, you heard that? And they're going to all rush you. So you're going to die trying to stay alive. It's kind of intuitive. So what you want to do instead is, from main elevator, you're going to run down this way, and you are going to uh, head down where I'm going to right now. And this is the way to the sewer extract. And the reason we want to go here is because it is safe and people don't really roam down here. You know, people can spawn down here, but it's, uh, people just don't uh, roam down here. These doors spawn close to the way. I was down here earlier. I filmed earlier, but I didn't like the way it was, so I redid it. So you run down all the way this way, and then at the end of this tunnel is the sewer branch. What you have to do is take hit the button on the left side, which I'm going to aim at right now. You hit this button right there on the wall. It's going to drain all the water, and then you can stand on this right side over here, and it'll extract you. Make sure that the timer in the top right says any time less than 33 minutes remaining. So you see 32, so we're chilling. It's a 40-minute map. And I've been here for 7 minutes. We're just going to write up the timer for this one. So it just makes your life easier. You don't waste a card. And if you spawn on the other side of the map and go to the O uh, elevator, which is the big medical one, the bottom of this metal staircase, uh, what you're going to do is reverse this route that I'm doing right now. So you spawn at the other side, medical block. You're going to just run down. It's near black room, green room, blue room. Just run down here. This is the elevator. Everyone knows this. It's the drop-down room. It's like the most notorious elevator on this whole map. You hit that. Instead of hitting that button, you're going to come down this way. And you're going to run down this tunnel all the way on the right. Big double doors. Go through them. Close the door behind you. Go sewer. Sit there. And then wait to hit the button. Wait until like 35 minutes to hit the button. Because when you hit that button... It makes a sound, like, not, like, announcement, but, like, people in the middle, if they know their labs names, they'll know what it is, and they'll run down to try and kill you. So wait a couple minutes before you hit it, so they're looting rooms before you hit the button. They'll be looting, like, red room and green room, and they won't hear it. You'll be fine. So make sure that you wait, hit that, run to sewer, sit there. Do not hit an elevator, because you will get farmed by labs, man. Reserve, in my opinion, can be one of the harder maps to get through, if not the hardest. But it also can be the easiest depending on your spawns. It's, it's weird, but like depending on where you spawn, the map can be really difficult or just a block in the park. So if you spawn over here by RBVO, which is the marked room, what I would do if you have a duo is I would recommend actually just running straight this way. Have your duo go first. Make sure that Blue Har is not over here. If he's in the cable, it's kind of scary. But you can have him run down first. And when he says it's safe, what you could do is you could run down and go into Hermetic actually. And what you guys could do is chill on Hermetic for like a minute or two and see if some guy runs down and ends up hitting the uh the switch for you because what you could do is you know take your duo's gear and you could insta extract with the survive right you pick up his gear you get 200 xp you insta extract good to go you got your survive you're out of there cool that map's done super easy however sometimes sometimes it won't happen uh where you get the chance to do that where people hit the button right so if you spawn over here you could have take your duo's gear and then you could have him run across the map and hit the switch for you and then you take it and you leave and he goes like manhole or something like that. 
Now, vice versa, if we spawn across the map, your other options are buying a red rebel and bringing paracord. This is super cheap. If you do the barter from Jaeger, it's like one point like four mil for me right now in the white. They go up later in the white when propane tanks skyrocket. But right now it's pretty cheap. They're probably still under two mil. At least they can go up to like two and a half. But I think it's pretty worth it if you want to play lighthouse or reserve at all. Like having that just makes the extracts so much more uh, appealing to get through. So pretty much if you spawn anywhere in tank field over here or even buy manhole, what I recommend you do is just sit in that building next to manhole. Honestly, you can just chill right there and you can just sit in the building and then you can either leave through manhole when you're done, uh, when you're ready to leave. Or if you're scared of leaving through manhole, you can go ahead and run up the dome and leave through dome. And if you spawn pretty much anywhere else on the map, I would work your way up towards dome, chill on the rocks over here, and then try and leave through dome. If you have a duo, again, you can use the backpack swap to get out of the map super fast. Uh, you take his gear in the backpack, search it, you're good to go. If that doesn't work, then what you could... I mean, if you don't have a duo and that won't work for you, you can try and kill a scav on the way over. Tons of scavs in this area where I'm at. Tons of scavs over in the courtyard over there, so on the way over, you could probably snipe one. Uh, really easy in the middle of dome rocks. If you start off the dome, you could probably snipe a scav down here or somewhere over in this area see if you can get a headshot for your uh, survive bonus and i recommend bringing a mbss backpack if you want to leave through dome because any armor you have will fit in this backpack and then if you want to leave through manhole you're ditching 10k go ahead and get it so that's how i do reserve all right interchange fairly simple you want to make sure that you're bringing cash to this map in case the car extract is here if you didn't know there's a car extract behind the power station which is located to my right over here it's on the outside of the map pretty much what you can do is it's, see it's right there you walk up to it you pay it and you're good to go uh, at power, there are two, a couple scav spawns. Usually they're out back somewhere. It can be a free way to survive, or you can do the XP cheese with your friend. Now, if you spawn at power, either take the car extract after you kill a scav or after you get your friend's backpack to do the cheese, or you can run down this way to go ahead and go to no backpack, which is down here. Now, if you do go this way, I'd recommend you wait in the, like, kind of the turbine area a little bit to see if there are people that will run from the no backpack up this ramp. That happens a lot, so you might want to wait for them, let them pass, and then you can cross back the way they came be fine if you spawn all the way down this way pretty much i would also run to power you could also cut under the parking garage here and come out on this side to get a better view on power to see if anyone's holding it waiting for you if you have a duo i'd go there if you don't have a duo you could just run past and go towards no backpack that's no problem and if you spawn at the pipes far down all the way at railway you know what i'm talking about if you played this map at all all the way down at railway if you spawn there wait a minute before you actually leave your spawn so you don't get killed after spawn and then if you spawn emercom i would recommend Waiting a second or two, you know, wait like 30 seconds, and then you can start rotating down this way, and, uh, sorry, down this way to get to no backpack. Let the people that spawn over here get actually into the mall, and then once they get into the mall, you can go no backpack. Same thing, you can wait at the no backpack. You can kill a scav on the way down, because there's scavs at Emercom. Scavs here as well, but I wouldn't run to power if you spawn down there. And then the last thing is if you spawn in this far corner over there, I'd recommend that you kind of just run straight down the Emercom wall, you can kind of just avoid most of the players doing that. If you just hug this wall all the way down the map, you can get to Emercom. And if there's no scavs, you can just sit there and you can wait. You can do the XP cheese with your friend's backpack. Or you could just uh, shoot a scav in the head and take your leave and you're good to go. This map should not be too hard. Just stick to the outskirts and just know that if you spawn all the way down there, wait a minute. And if you spawn at Emercom, wait like 30 seconds over behind the tents before you go anywhere. Now, I think Woods is definitely the easier map to get this quest done because you can kind of just avoid most of the players in the map. Now, if you spawn over my scav house, I think this is probably one of the worst spawns for this. Uh, there's two ways of approaching this. One is you kind of hug the outside of the map, and you rotate all the way back through by Sniper Rock. And then by Sniper Rock, you can go toward the uh, Northern UN Extract. Or you can take the car extract over there. That's a fine way. That's a safe way. But it takes a long time, and you risk all of these spawns collapsing on you as you do that. Um, I do it a little bit riskier. Uh, I think it's just faster though, which kind of makes it better because people like to loot up in the beginning of woods or get to where they want to get to snipe. And I want to try to play around that. So what I do is I actually like to run over this way where I get to the water and there is a spawn in front of me. But usually what the spawn does is they'll run towards the sawmill towards the attachment shack. So I like to get to the water over here and kind of avoid the fact that this spawn like wants to be in front of me at the attachment shack and... They're the only thing I have to really worry about. It's that spawn, and then there's a spawn here, and a spawn over there, and they usually can test this camp over there. So what I do is I pretty much hug the whole outside of the map. I even run directly at the pier, and the reason that I do this is because all the spawns over here almost always run to this camp, because whether they want scab kills, or they want loot, or they run to spine rock, or they run pretty much anywhere like the, the violet shack. They don't run directly where I'm going, so they don't really ever see me. 
So I like to go this way. Again, it's up to you. Whatever you think is the best bet for you. And I loop all the way around, and I'm going to check if this extract over here is open with the flares. Uh, this is called the... Uh, I forget what this one's called. It's the RUAF gate is what this one's called. So you check if this is open. If it's not, uh, not open, then you can hug this wall all the way down towards the UN roadblock. And then if you spawn at UN roadblock, instead of walking the way that I walked, what I'd recommend you do is you pretty much hug this side all the way down and run to the town and go to the train of uh, the car extract. The car extract on this map is always there. So as long as someone doesn't take it, it'll always be there. You can see it has no question marks. It is here every single time unless someone takes it. You can put the money in there. You can sit behind the sign and you can just kind of wait. And if you spawn over in the new area, which is all the way over here, usually you have outskirts extract. So you can spawn at the USEC camps and kind of run all the way down to outskirts. Or if you spawn closer to the car, you can run to the village and then go to the car and you can pay to leave. It's not too hard. You can leave any of the bunkers as well if you want to, but I think leaving at either the car, the northern UN roadblock, the UN roadblock, or outskirts are probably the best place to go about this. And if you get lost, it's your compass, man. Yeah, uh, the way that I remember the sawmill is if you look at my compass, uh, south, at the bottom of the sawmill at the pier is south. So, pretty much, wherever I'm on this map, uh, south is sawmill. That's how I remember that. Control line, super easy. He's on road to customs over here. Any of these spawns, just hug this back concrete wall that I'm looking at right now, and stick all the way around, rotate to the checkpoint, where it has a sniper scab. Kill your sniper scab, get your survive XP, and then you're going to rotate to path to lighthouse, and you're going to leave. And then, if you spawn over at tunnel, or you spawn at the scav house, or the swamp, or the cottages, you are just going to go to the path to lighthouse, and if you do the XP cheese, you'll live, and if not, you survive 7 minutes. Or you wait 7 minutes, and then you just you leave, and you're done. It's a really easy quest to do on this map. You just hug the outside, and you SJ6 to avoid all the players, just have a nice little bit of stamina to get across the map, and you're fine. No one's looking at these back walls, because they're just out of your way, so I would do it. Guys, that was the guide. If you have any questions about this guide or anything in particular about Tarkov, pop by the stream. We're live every single day. Link in description. And if you enjoyed the video, hit that sub button. Hit the like button. Comment down below. All that good stuff. More guides on my channel if you want to learn some more. Until next time, guys. Peace out.